Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Well it's absolutely bucketing down outside so I figured what better time to install a new piece of equipment. Now although we're in January now, towards the end of January, um, I had received this uh, at Christmas time. It was a Christmas gift uh, from uh, my lovely wife and this is the Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator. Um, now I just don't know how she managed to work out that that's what I wanted. Here's a nice cup of tea. Okay. Uh, hang on. Yep, no, that's about perfect. Thank you. Hun, have you decided what you want for Christmas yet? Uh, something for the telescope. I haven't quite decided yet. Have you decided yet? Uh, no, not yet. What about now? Still thinking. Anyway, um, let's uh, unbox this, shall we? And here it is, the Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator. Now, um, it's got a nice thin profile, it's 18 millimeters, but if you do add the adapter that it comes with sort of for the camera side, it makes it 19 millimeters. So this is the telescope side on here, and for that it does come with this sort of uh, nose piece that you would attach on there, and obviously if you're putting it into the telescope and you are, you know, um, putting it in with a clamp system, that's how you would attach it, but I won't be doing that. Um, on the other side, it comes with an adapter for your imaging train here, um, which you put in here, but again, I won't be using that uh, for reasons that I'll tell you in a moment. Um, now, although this is a very uh, sort of low profile at 18 millimeters, um, I was having difficulty in fitting it into my imaging train on the Skywatcher Esprit 120. Now I have the field flattener which has a backspacing of 75 millimeters but by the time I have my camera in there, the off-axis guider and the um, filter wheel, I was really pushing my luck of, as to how I was going to actually fit this in. So I was talking to uh, the guys at Sidereal Trading where I um, got this from and um, said, you know, how am I going to attach this on and looking at various adapters and things like that and they came up with the idea that I should probably install this before the, uh, for the field flattener rather than afterwards. That way I don't have to worry about the backspacing issue. So in order to have that happen I needed a couple of more, a couple more um, adapters here and this is a um, what are we, M65 to M54 um, adapter, and it's, there's going to be one on each side of here, so I'll put one over here, it'll attach to the telescope side, and then one over here which will then attach to the focal reducer. So um, the other thing it comes with is a USB cable. Uh, USB port is under here. There's power under here, it doesn't come with a power supply, you've got to get your own power supply or you know, uh, attach it to whatever system you've got. I do have the Pegasus um, Powerbox Advance, so I think I should be able to power it through this, through that. So um, yeah, let's get these adapters um, on. Right, that's all done. So now it's a matter of um, taking the imaging train off, including the field flattener, on the Skywatcher, um, attach this uh, to the telescope side, which will screw in, which should be, should be nice and solid, and then attach this to the um, field flattener, and um, then plug it in and get it all going. And so let's head round to the back of the Skywatcher here and have a look what we've got to do. Okay, so you can actually rotate the imaging train on this telescope. I think you can use this area here for rotation and also I've done it down here as well but it's a bit of, bit of a fiddle and it's kind of hard to get a really nice accurate framing and it's also a little difficult because if you have say for example your camera's moved or you've changed something and you want to put uh, and you've already done a session on a target 
Um, trying to get that exact framing back again can be quite tricky. Also, um, with collaborations, if somebody's already taken a, a shots with a telescope and you want to try and match their uh, framing exactly, then that's where the um, Falcon rotator will come in handy. So I've got to get all this off here because I'll be attaching the um, Falcon rotator in here, so before the field flattener. Got the wrong adapter. Two weeks later. Okay, so we're two and a half weeks later and um, I've now got the correct adapters. So, um, although I had ordered these uh, two different adapters, they accidentally sent me two of the same adapter. So this is a male M54 to male M54, which will be fine for me connecting uh, the rotator to the focal reducer. But I needed an M74 female to an M54 male to attach the uh, rotator onto the back of the Skywatcher. So got in touch with Sidereal Trading and said, hey, look, you know, you've sent me two of these instead of two different ones. They were very apologetic. They really quickly sent the new one out, which was fantastic. And uh, I sent the old one back and they paid for the postage. So yeah, can't complain about the customer service here. That was great. So um, now I've got the right bits. Let's connect this rotator. Okay, that's a bit towards the telescope. So actually made a mistake in describing this piece. This is a male M54 to male M65. So that will attach to the uh, focal reducer. Uh, but before I can fire up the software, of course, I've got to make some uh, USB and power connections. So the um, Falcon rotator doesn't come with a power cable, unfortunately. So um, I had a spare one, which I'm running from here to one of the um, outputs on the saddle, which is a 12 volt one amp. That's apparently all it requires. And then the USB cable that it comes with um, here is quite long. Um, so I've had to sort of bunch it up a bit here with some velcro and then I'm running it across to this um, output just there uh, on the saddle so um, that's the USB connections I thought about running a sh one of the short cables from here to the ASI 2600 because it's got the hub but because I've got an off-axis guider, the um, cable would be running right across here, and as soon as this rotated, it would snag on it. Probably not an issue if you're not, if you're not using an off-axis off guider, but that's what I'm doing, so I have to use a long cable. So now it's time to fire up the software and get this thing rotating. Okay, so I've, uh, I'm in Windows, and I've opened up the Pegasus Astro Unity platform software, which the icon's over here, and you can download that from uh, the Pegasus Astro website. And it's detected all the items that I have uh, from Pegasus Astro. So I've got two Powerbox advances, one for each computer, uh, sorry, one for each telescope. And I've got the Focus Cube, which is doing the focusing on the Skywatcher. And then I've got this one here now, the Falcon Rotator, which it detected um, automatically. And if we open it up here, this is the sort of screen where we're met with. Now, sort of work through what, a lot of what these things mean. Um, a little different to a lot of the videos out there. I think they were using the other, the older versions of the software, which looked quite different to this. And uh, there wasn't a lot of instructions on what all these things mean necessarily, but I think I've worked them out. So hopefully my description will be correct. So over here, we've got the dial showing, you know, where it can rotate around 360 degrees. And it has a blue line, which shows it'll rotate this way, 220 degrees. But if you ask for a rotation that's in this area here, say you're over here um, and you say, I want to go 340 degrees, it won't go all the way around. It'll just go back to here, which is which is good. And it's also quite good with, with regards to, um, uh, you know, not snagging cables and things. Um, my suggestion is that you set your zero position how you want it and then 
sort of connect your other your cables back up again which I'm about to sort of demonstrate for you but um, on the video you can see there looking at the um, telescope I the way when I screwed everything on the um, guide camera was pointing downwards and I'd rather have it up if I need to make any adjustments to focusing and all that kind of stuff it just works better on my brain that, that it pointing upwards is my zero position and the sort of the, the filter wheels more down to the bottom so what I want to do is rotate it 180 degrees and then reset that as a zero position so we can see here it's pointing at zero it says zero degrees so I'm going to type in here go to 180 and then there's go or there's stop here and I'm just going to say go and it's going to start rotating and I'm going to watch my cables and unplug them and replug them in as necessary just until I get that zero position um, correct but I'll, I'll speed this up for you Okay, so now we have the um, guide camera pointing um, vertically upwards, uh, but it says it's rotated around to 80 degrees, and I want that to now be zero degrees. So you go up to the sync position here. Now I could sync this to any position I want. If I wanted to have it at right angles and make that as my zero position, I would rotate it around to here. Or I could say I want to set this position, you know, at a at 90 degrees and it would then call it 90 degrees but I'm going to make this zero so that it's pointing directly upwards so over here I put in the zero it was sitting there by default click on the little settings icon and are you sure you want this current position yes and you'll see this change from 180 to zero degrees and there it is there now um, one thing next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to rotate it again 20 degrees um, and what I'm going to tell it to do is rotate clockwise but what will happen is you'll see on the little camera it's actually going anti-clockwise and I'd rather it rotated in the direction that I um, you know that if it says rotating clockwise I want it to rotate that way so what you need to do in that instance and I'm guessing it's related to the fact that I've inverted the zero position um, from 180 degrees to zero is you just hit this reverse over here click on there and now when I go to 20 degrees we should see it go in the correct direction and that's what it's doing which is great now um, as I said if I wanted it to go to say 340 degrees I could put that in it won't go all the way around it will actually go backwards to that position so again as I said that's really good for not snagging your cables now um, there's a thing park which I sort of thought was the zero position on park but when I touch on the um, question mark here it says park to zero position makes sense but it says move the focuser all the way in until you reach the park encoder or zero position so I don't know if this is related to moving the the focuser or the rotator or that's a typo but at the moment I'm sort of staying away from that. It's just interesting though that over here there is a predetermined position called park which they have put in by default. Like they've given these positions and you can add different positions by putting in a plus sign if you want to and add another one in there but they've said the park position is zero so if I was to touch that it will go back to that zero position. So I'm sort of not sure whether that's a typo in there when it says focus art or not but um, at the moment I'm just not touching that button. Um, over here um, I've named it Falcon Rotator. It did have it's just a serial number but you can put in whatever name you want and hit save. So if you had two of these rotators on different telescopes you could name them so you could define which telescope is, is which. Over here are some preset edits where these are sort of called relative moves. So what it means is whatever position it's in it will move um, a, a certain number of degrees relative to the current position. So let's just say we'll move this to um, 25 degrees and hit go. Now if I press 10, push on 10 here that doesn't mean it'll go to 10 degrees. What it'll do is it'll move 10 degrees in a clockwise direction from the current position. So I'll hit that and you'll see that it will move another 10 degrees that way. If I want to go backwards it'll go minus 10. It's just a way of you know quickly doing some little movements or particularly if you're trying to work out what is your zero position on your um, when you set your camera up it's quite good for making these little, little movements but uh, that these movements are always relative to 
to the position it currently is and you can edit these you know if you didn't want it moving by two degrees here you can change that to a one and save it as a one this one here th these are uh, absolute moves so these are predetermined positions you can say well uh, a is 90 degrees I you know might want to have a get it to move straight to 90 degrees you can just click on this and it will go to 90 um, 180 or 270 but you can define these and save them you can change that number and save it if you wanted to um, or for example we can add another one in. and I've got one here so I'm just going to call that um, D there and um, then I'm going to put on here that I want that to be 45 degrees in this position and I'm going to hit save and now we've got a D here and it's uh, at 45 and now it's actually going to move there because I, I created that um, or you can get rid of it if you don't want it there but I'll just leave it there for the moment so um, it is interestingly the I think I clicked I must have clicked on the on the park position I'm not sure I'll just check to see where it goes okay so I clicked on the park so if I click on there it's going to go to 45 degrees um, so those are the basic settings um, in uh, the unity platform but I'm going to be using it through through Nina so um, let's just stop this and tell it to go back to zero because um, we're going to open up Nina and uh, connect it up in Nina Okay, we're in Nina, and this is the profile I've got for the Skywatcher. I won't connect everything at this stage. I'm just going to go to the Rotator tab here. And when you click on Rotator, this will actually say no Rotator initially. So as long as you've installed the, the software for the Falcon Rotator, when you click on here, you'll see that there is it's listed, Pegasus Astro Falcon. So you click on that, then you click on the cogs, and it will it should come up with the um, click it again with the Falcon Rotator here we go searching for device there it is and I just select it and then it's come up twice because uh, I clicked it twice and then you click connect and it connects and so you can see it tells you you're connected to the um, Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator it's not moving at the moment there's a cross there reverse I've put on again because I want to do the same thing as I did in the um, software where it actually goes clockwise if I tell it to go clockwise by default it's off so you want it to have to be on at this stage I've said full mechanical range um, I'm just going to work out whether or not that means that if I put th I think I've already worked out that if I put in 360 degrees or 350 degrees it still rotates anti-clockwise um, but it knows at the moment that my uh, mechanical position is zero and then let's just say we want to go to uh, 10 degrees and this is a positive so we'll go clockwise and because I hit um, reverse it should go in the correct direction which it has done and it tells you it's at 10 degrees now if I put 350 degrees it should um, go back so you can see it's counting down to the zero and then it'll go back past the other way until it's to 350 so again you know the system works for not snagging your your cables etc so um, that's the basics of how you connect it up and check that it's all working and everything the the next thing um, I'll do is when we get a clear night we'll go and I'll show you how um, you can use the rotator to you know set your camera um, to fit a particular um, orientation you want on an object or if you are trying to match uh, a previously taken image whether it be yourself in a previous session but you've moved your imaging train around you want to get back to that same um, orientation or if you're doing a collaboration and somebody else has taken an image and they've sent that to you you can load that up and then you can actually adjust the orientation of your camera to exactly match that other person's so that when you're both imaging you're both getting the same um, orientation of your cameras but uh, we've got to wait for a clear night for that so uh, fingers crossed that happens soon